Good day. Today we're going to be looking at the concept of drawing templates and some basic scaling components regarding that drawing template environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish up a drawing that I've already begun and then uh, insert a template concept and uh, work within that environment to develop a, a clean print of the drawing. So I started this particular architectural drawing um, with just a couple of single lines and uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, to talk a little bit about is the scaling factor and so forth and right now I just drew a line as you can see here in the uh, pop-up uh, information bar on the bottom 18 feet long so I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape because that line has gone off the screen and I'm going to have to zoom or demagnify that line and so many times that works well, and I can see the, uh, the 18 foot line there um, as we create this drawing. I can then continue to, to draw um, 12 feet, 8 feet, and then I'll just highlight, find that spot of connectivity, and finish up the drawing itself. So now we've got our basic drawing. Now again, this is a, a fairly large scale drawing. It's 20 feet on the bottom, 18 feet vertical. So it's not going to fit on a normal sized piece of paper without magnification. So now that we have our drawing set, what we can do is begin to load the template. Now we're going to show you how to edit the template here in a little while but initially we're going to show you how to just apply the template to a drawing environment that you already have. The easiest way is to right mouse click on the word layout and you'll notice that one of the options is from template. When you open that a list of all the template files that are available to you that are within the AutoCAD environment are shown. What you have to realize though is that it's buried under your user app data, Autodesk 2023 or 2022, and it goes all the way down to an English te template area. That's where these files are stored. But what if you wanted to add your own template in here? How could you do that easily? Well, here's a little tip. What we can do is bring in Windows Explorer we've got a template file when I provide that in our um, class this template file can be dragged and dropped in this folder so now we've got a 1371 title block template uh, file that we can apply and we choose open and when we do it's going to allow us to choose an A or a B size title block template from there we can then uh, take a look at the template itself that we can uh, edit and, and work within that environment. So if I choose an A size template, which is an A size sheet of paper, uh, which is eight and a half by 11, B size is twice that, 11 by 17, you can create C size, D size, and we'll talk about how you can do that here in the video also. So first we're just gonna choose the A size template and you'll notice that it adds a new tab on the bottom. That new tab is actually the drawing sheet. So each of these layouts is the printable drawing sheet that you would have. Now within that drawing sheet, you need to be able to see your drawing. Well, you can see that we only see one little corner of our drawing based on the scale. So there's a song out there called the Hokey Pokey. And when I instruct this, I use the hokey pokey concept because you need to double click in, double click out, double click in, and we can move the drawing about. And you do the hokey pokey, turn yourself around, that's what it's all about. But 
The difference is, is that when we double click in, we're working inside the layout in the viewport that's within the layout. Now I can, when I'm double clicked in, notice that you get a very solid dark line. When I double click out, that dark line goes away and notice that I'm editing all the text and other options here. But when I double click in, I can't edit any of the text or options. So the difference is, is when I'm inside the viewport, I'm actually looking at the model tab. I'm actually looking at the model tab when I'm inside the viewport. When I'm outside the viewport, I'm dealing with the layout itself, the ability to edit the layout. So I can't change the scale of the drawing, but I can change the size of the piece of paper that I'm viewing using that. But when I double click in, I can change the size of the drawing inside the window so I can see and scale it appropriately for my operation. So how does that work? How does the scaling work? Well, once you double click in, down on the bottom, the right hand side, you're gonna see a number. There's also some other settings here related to annotation of objects. And there is the ability to automatically set up to where your dimensions scale with the drawing based on the scale that you select here on this drop down list. So this number is actually on, is tagged to a drop down list. Now we don't know what 0 0.01638 scale is, but I do see some recognizable scales for architecture here. And so one quarter inch equals a foot is a really common architecture scale. And if I select that, you'll notice that my drawing updates and will it fit? Yeah, but it doesn't give me a lot of room around the sides. So I may have to choose another scale. So one quarter inch equals a, f a foot didn't work real well. I could choose three sixteenths, but that's kind of an odd scale, but it truly is a, a, a measurable scale. But an eighth of an inch to a foot seems to be an appropriate scale. So that is the scale of my drawing now. So that's one eighth inch equals a foot. So every eighth of an inch is one foot in the drawing accurately. That's the cool part about this is that this is extremely accurate. Now, the minute I roll my mouse and change that scaling factor again, I have to go back. Notice that the number changed again. I have to go back and reselect it. And every time I reselect it, if I press and hold and pan, I can move the object but I don't want to use the wheel by rolling it until I double click out. Once I double click out, now if I roll the wheel, the overall scale of the drawing is changed, not the specific uh, object itself. So the annotation buttons here on the bottom, notice that they go away when I'm not inside the viewport. So those viewports actually have scaling properties associated with them and also tie into dimensioning. So now I can go ahead and edit the drawing name, your name, what the scale factor was. And so the scale factor here in this case was 1 eighth of an inch equals 1 foot. And you might be thinking, well, why doesn't that automatically populate? Okay, it's a good question. There are some automatic population text fields. In this case, the date is an automatic population text field. So even though it may show a different date initially, when you go to print it, it will have an accurate date once you save it. It will have an accurate date set. So ultimately, the date set um, is a text field that automatically pulls the date from your computer. So that's one of the things you can do. You can also have other automatic settings associated with it. So like in this case, I could add text. And again, adding text on this, you double click out in the gray area. You select text. I pick, I can magnify and draw a window. And then I want a capital A here but I also want to make it bold. 
and I probably want to change the layer back to layer or back to the title block layer that would be good and the text would be a different color so you can go ahead and add text or add a logo or whatever you need to do you can also delete this um, but we're not in the editing mode of the template itself the DWT drawing template so that that will get you through the first half of this concept is how to apply and utilize the layout. The second half of this is going to show you how to create, uh, or a second video is going to show you how to create or edit the title block template. So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.